Hi everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, so this week we're going to talk about the new topic called Kubernetes security. And uh, Kubernetes has been very popular and it's gaining popularity as applications are being more and more containerized. And uh, one of the uh, goal of like you know, as a security professional to make sure you keep up with the new technologies. And as the Kubernetes is being more and more used, the, like all of the cloud providers, uh, including Azure, uh, AWS, and also uh, GCP are all, and of course the other cloud provider as well has the Elastic uh, Kubernetes services as well. So we must know about what is the Kubernetes security loopholes, what are the threat vectors, how one can attack it, how you should defend it, um, this this is not just a like you know good topic to learn for the interviews uh, that you may face because of course most of the modern applications will be built on the Kubernetes or maybe using the Kubernetes uh, but as well as in your real time when you are uh, pen testing the application you must know okay what like you know learn about the if you know if you don't know how the Kubernetes is architected it's very hard for you to exploit the applications or probably like and look at the application as holistically so hopefully this is uh, useful to you. Uh, uh, of course, I'm going to start with the, uh, like, you know, uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about the basic things, but as we move along, we'll, we'll talk about the security focused topics in the Kubernetes. So I hope you like it. If you do, uh, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for weekly episodes, which comes out every Monday. Uh, so let's get into it. So uh, what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating computer application deployment, scaling and management. So this is the definition of the Kubernetes, uh, but many of you might not sure, still not like, you know, can you wrap your head around what is the Kubernetes? Why, why someone would use Kubernetes over so many other, uh, like, you know, system we have. So uh, I, I'm sure like, I don't need to teach you guys what is the containers and, and why one should use container and, and stuff like that. So as the application grows and, and becomes more and more complex, you have many requirements. You need to make sure your application is available all the time. You need to make sure it's secure. It deploys automatically. So the orchestration of the containers becomes so much difficult. And that's where Kubernetes is the main goal. Uh, like, you know, it helps you uh, the orchestration. Uh, so it, it, it takes off of the heavy lifting of like, you know, managing the containers. Uh, so your focus is only on the application code and, and de like, you know, not even deployment. It's all about like, you know, you, how the application is functioning. So scaling and management, everything Kubernetes will take care of. So later on, when we look at the architecture, you will you will get more understanding on why so. So uh, I guess I briefly touch upon this one. So why you need to learn about the Kubernetes security? Uh, because uh, you will run into the Kubernetes uh, today or tomorrow for sure because most of the applications are now being containerized. They are either using cloud service provider or they're using uh, on-host uh, Kubernetes. And uh, Kubernetes is not something like when you're, when you're a security professional, you don't need to only focus on the application or the code that the developer has wrote, but also need to focus on the infrastructure of where the code is running, right? So Kubernetes is one of the container because if you compromise Kubernetes, then essentially you can also escalate the privilege and get the application access. We'll, we'll teach all like, you know, we'll, we'll teach about all of these things in the future sections, but uh, that is the reason like why, why you need to also focus on the Kubernetes security. So here's the Kubernetes like, you know, uh, architecture, I, I would say like, probably a common architecture. And then I, what I want to do in this session is I want to explain uh, all these components. So later on in the next section, when we talk about the attack vectors for each of these and how one can exploit this, it becomes much more clear rather than jumping directly into the security. Uh, so let's start with the master node, right? And I'm putting this uh, uh, like in a chart here so we can compare and look at side by side. So this is what the master I'm talking about, right? So the master node is responsible for maintaining the desired state of your cluster. Now, so there, there are two two types of node. One is master and then the other one is worker nodes. And they're, they're most likely in, in all the architecture you would find separate, like, you know, separate. So master node has three component, which is uh, cluster store, uh, key value store, controller, scheduler, API server. And then uh, you have the worker nodes where you have different like, you know, pods running and within the pod you have the application running. So don't worry about, we'll, we'll talk about each of these components, but let's just focus on the master one. 
So master node uh, has all of these components and it's responsible for maintaining this as a state of your cluster. So uh, if you ask Kubernetes that my application should have at least 10 replication or it should have at least this much memory or it should be able to scale for this demand. So master node is the one where you, it's sort of like a control plane where you control the application and it's uh, uh, like, you know, uh, the infrastructure. And the other thing is, you see little like kubectl, uh, this is the one which uh, pretty much interacts with the master node through API server, right? So that's the main interaction that the, uh, the with the master node you have. So now if we go uh, to the next one, which is the cluster store uh, or uh, cluster store is right here. Uh, this is the key value store. So yeah, like of course you have many ports and many nodes uh, within uh, Kubernetes. So you apply tags. Uh, it's, it, it's sort of like a database of metadata of your architecture. So in AWS, if you if you see like uh, if you create any resource, you can apply the tag information. You can apply any value to it. So it's the same thing. Uh, here it's gonna store all the key value pair. So later on, when you need to identify something, you need to uh, like, you know, f uh, uh, search something, it's easy for you to identify. So it's reliable key value store and it stores the labels, resource type values, etc. cetera. Uh, so essentially what I talked about. Uh, next, let's talk about the API server. Now, API server are primarily the REST APIs. So we all are well versed of REST APIs and how to pen test and what are the vulnerabilities. And REST APIs or the API server interacts with all the other components within the master node, right? So as we uh, saw here, uh, so the API server would talk with the controller, uh, KV and the scheduler. So this is very critical part of the Kubernetes uh, because imagine like uh, if someone is able to interact with the API server, however, the goal is to only control with the kubectl. Uh, that's the only uh, process should be able to interact with. Next one is scheduler. Uh, scheduler's task is to deploy the container image to the available pods. Uh, so for example, if we uh, go back here, so the scheduler, right, uh, will get a, a task from the API that, okay, you need to schedule uh, this pod, like you need to schedule this application or you need to run this application. Now the scheduler, task is to find out okay which pod are uh, empty or which pod has a bandwidth or, and like you know find that and, and schedule or run that application into the pod and it's going to deploy and it's going to do all the all, all of the tasks and it has many configurable options so you, you can define okay what's the scalability and and we'll we'll see those later in the details but as far as uh, you need to uh, remember uh, that scheduler is, as the name suggests, it's schedule the work uh, that's been given by the API server. All right, next one, uh, we're gonna talk about the controller. So after the app is scheduled and running uh, by the scheduler, of course, uh, it monitors if the node goes down. So controller will keep that monitoring and ensure it meets the replication needs such as 10 instance. So if I specify in the config file that I need 10 replication, it's gonna make sure it it remains like that. It joins the services and the pods and then and it also creates the default accounts and the access token for someone to access. Uh, so controller uh, is quite critical as well because it pretty much control uh, the application, right? So uh, if you if you look at that uh, as a controller, it, it takes the value from the API server and then it pretty much monitors the entire nodes like node one, two and three and within the node, like which pods are running, which application, if anything goes down, any node goes down, it, it's gonna spin up a new instance and, and uh, like, you know, notify scheduler. So it's gonna do all of those things. So that's the task of controller. Now you being as an end user of the Kubernetes, you don't need to, uh, like, you know, once you set up all the template and the values, you don't need to worry about anything. Kubernetes will do all it, all of the magic, all the management in the back end by itself. So you don't need to worry about all of all of this. That's the reason Kubernetes is gaining so much popularity. And again, it's an open source. Now nodes, uh, pods are actually runs on the node, 
and uh, nodes are you can think of it as a like a physical server like your windows server or linux server or it could also be a virtual machine so uh, uh, and and the pods are which are running within the nodes as you can see here uh, so so this is node right and then within nodes you have like multiple pods so pods are running uh, within nodes and the nodes could be like a VM or the physical system. So it's pretty much a wrapper around the pod. Uh, in the worker node, you could, like you could have multiple worker node and each node could have multiple pods and each pod could have multiple applications. Containers, uh, this is very straightforward, like containers are the runtime software responsible for running the containers. Uh, Docker is the most popular that you might have heard of and and Kubernetes it's also I, I wrote it here as a K8 but it's a Kubernetes uh, how we write in the short form provides a way of managing containers in a way that accommodates many features that are not available in the container runtime alone right because every container runtime has a different features but the Kubernetes provides all the options that you can also uh, it, it supports like four, or I think multiple kinds of container, but Docker is the most common. That's why I took the example. But yeah, it also provides feature. So you can also manage and, and configure a container as well. And you don't need to rely on the container provider. Kubelet. Uh, I think this is one of the most uh, sensitive and I would say most important uh, component in the Kubernetes architecture. And why I say that? Because that's the agent which runs on each node. It ensures that containers are running in a pod and then API servers uses Kubelet to schedule the pods. So now if you go back here, right? So uh, Kubelet uh, uh, is like, you know, running here and it's gonna monitor this and it's gonna notify controller and scheduler if anything goes down it's gonna take so it's a it's connecting master and the worker node so it's gonna take the a input or a request from the api server or the scheduler and it's gonna give the feedback back to the scheduler and controller as well so uh, make sure that the uh, containers are running as it sh should be uh, and then uh, it's available on each node. So uh, API server schedule can easily connect to that. Application microservices, uh, I don't think so. I need to explain a lot about this. Um, applications are uh, run within the pod. So you could have like a microservice, you could have a single monolithic application. Um, when I say microservice, like you know, you could have one service where it makes like all the authorization decision, like a permission uh, checks. You have other microservice of the application which does all the user onboarding stuff. So you could have like micro microservices for one application, or you could also have like monolithic application running in the port. That that doesn't matter. But I don't need to describe more on like what is the application and and. Uh, what we can expert on the application. So uh, we are not gonna focus on the application pen testing, which we have tons of videos in the other playlist. But yeah, as far as uh, as far as uh, this architecture is concerned, uh, so quickly to summarize, uh, there is master node, there is worker node. Uh, master node has this many components and uh, on the API server, which is exposed outside uh, where uh, the admin would used to like configure several things like uh, they're using they're going to use the kubelet or kubectl and then which is running on each worker node worker node has pod pod running application it could have multiple pods and uh, you have scheduler which schedules a job and controller who monitors it so this is the summary of the uh, architecture of uh, how the uh, kubernetes work i hope that's very much clear to you now in the next session uh, we're gonna learn about what are the attack vectors or what are the things that uh, you as a engineer or devops or uh, software engineer and and also a security professional need to make sure uh, when your client or your team is using the kubernetes that uh, you must make sure like you know these are the things that you need to secure so uh, one cannot uh, exploit any of these missing pieces 
Uh, but yeah, that's that's all uh, for uh, this session. I hope you like it. I hope it adds a value. If you do, please hit the thumbs up button. It's gonna greatly, uh, like, you know, help me, and and at least I can get the response that yeah, uh, this is uh, useful content to you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write it down in the comment section. Um, and if you have to share anything, if you know uh, anything about the Kubernetes, uh, please uh, also pin it down in the comment so everyone can uh, read it, uh, share it. So that's all. Uh, I'll see you all next Monday. Thank you. Bye.